Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice 96 degree day out in front of my house in the Miata. Uh, today I want to learn about tuning. My experience with tuning is fairly minimal. I know enough to babysit a mega squirt until my buddy's NA Miata to, was able to self tune and, and, and that's about it. I know there's tables, I know there's cables, and it's, it's, it's a good old time and you'll either blow up your car or make it super fast. Today I just kind of want to like use my tuning cable for the first time. What I have here is a Tactrix open port. It, I think these are mainly for like Mitsubishis and Subarus, but someone actually reverse engineered the ECU and the NC Miata uh, and I have definitions for that. So let's get a few things set up. So I guess step one here is really just to get into this box. This actually wasn't supposed to be here until Monday, but USPS came in clutch and got me this thing. This is just made by a, a it's like a two man, uh, two man deal here. And like, I'm pretty impressed by this. Uh, like this packaging is pretty nice. You've got a little window there. So you can see that, yes, there is something in the box. 72 megahertz processor, USB 2.0 full speed. Upgradable software supports K-Line. I wonder if you could use this with uh, Toyotas. Um, J2534 pass-through, that's kind of neat. Um, yeah, so that's certainly something. And let's see if I can get into this box without my knife, which I left inside. Okay, pretty simple here in the packaging. Looks like a biodegradable packaging. That's kind of nice. Got some decals, Tactrix logo and Tactrix logo, but bigger this time. USB mini cable okay and that'll connect the device itself yep that's kind of a nice little logo there that's a thing all right let's uh let's take a look at what else we need of course you're gonna need a laptop here's mine it's an old hp it's got the two pieces of software that you're also gonna need which are rom drop which was developed by the nc miata community i believe uh specifically for this ecu and then ecu flash which uh, is the software that actually comes with the Tactrix or is supposed to be used with it, if I remember correctly. Let's take a look at the box. No, open port 2.0. Oh yes, ECU flash software, there we go. If I actually would read, my answers would be right there. So ECU flash is what we actually use to affect the tunes and then ROM drop is what we use to collect them. Installation is pretty simple and well documented on their sites. So let's open up ROM drop. I do accept the license agreement. It, it does help if you have the device, once the device to be plugged in first. One moment. Ooh, it's got RGBs. Oh, we're real gamers now. That's kind of neat. Okay, let's uh, get that plugged in. Yeah, screw my seat back so I have enough room. Oh, laptop eyes. Oh, <laughs> oh, there we go. The ROM drop, open. Loading the driver, it looks like. Still loading the driver. Still loading the driver. Still, I just had to hit enter and it worked. Okay, so you can clear trouble codes, dynamic partial flash ROM, flash the entire ROM, or read or sniff can communications. I want to read the ROM. R, send tester present, processing, processing, beep, boop, boop. It does take a minute though. And it was then that he realized that I didn't have the car turned on. So let's, uh, let's just read that again. Oh, there we go. Now it's actually doing something. I, I am a genius. ROM drop is just a zip file that you can unzip and run from wherever it is, but you do need to remember where it is because when we go into ECU flash, there's gonna be a little bit of setup that requires some of ROM drops files. There's a little bit of interplay between them to uh, make sure that it's able to read all the NC uh, ECU definitions. So when this is done, I will open up ECU flash and we'll do that. And we can take a look at what all this, uh, this software allows us to do. It's actually quite shocking. Wait, it finished. I think we can go ahead and close that now. I can open up ECU flash and get to work. Uh, one thing that I have to do though first is go to file and options. And we want to change our color map and metadata directories to the same folders of that name in our uh, ROM drop folder. I want to change color map to be my ROM drop color maps folder and then metadata to also be my ROM drops metadata folder. Metadata or metadata, the world may never know. Okay, there's the bin for the Mazda uh, ECU that we just got. I'm actually going to go into my directory and make a copy of that because no matter what, I want to always have a backup of my stock. That way, no matter what changes I make to this one, if I screw something up, I can just flash back to stock. So let's, uh, I just realized I called that NC Sock ECU. 
Uh, we'll just roll with it. Isuvash could not, uh... Okay, I had to do a bunch of nerd stuff here. Basically, the definition file for my specific ECU didn't exist, but the author of all of this stuff uh, said in a forum thread that this ECU is the same as the other ECUs is the same year, so I was able to alter the definition file, blah, blah, blah. Now it's open, and we can look at all this stuff we can do. Look at this, we got, we got, we got, we got throttle duty, app, uh, throttle duty in different gears. That's one of the things I want to change today. Uh, throttle duty limits, fan speeds uh, for like all kinds of dis different situations. The rev limiter, the speed limiter. Let's see here. What's our, what's our speed limit? Uh, 250 miles an hour. Cool. Uh, dang, what a, what a, what an absolute buzzkill. I, I, I wish I sure could go faster. We got engine load limits. Uh, I bet that limit is all of it. A bunch of stuff that's not active. Math scaling, uh, useful if you get like a bigger oversized map. Map scaling in case you use a different map sensor. Injector scaling in case you get bigger injectors. A whole bunch of fueling tables that I don't understand, but I sure would like to. You can define your different gear ratios. I think this will actually affect the speedometer, so that'd be pretty cool if I wanted to put a different rear end in this. I can change idle speed targets. Uh, something called an idle validation switch, which I've never actually heard of. A bunch of uh, automatic transmission only stuff that I don't need to worry about because I'm not a peasant. Spark advanced tables. Uh, this is one of the things that people did a lot on the 1.6 was they'd advance their base timing three degrees um, and they'd run premium fuel all the time. This car already calls for premium fuel, so I'm not sure I can get away with that, but I could data log my knock thresh, my knock, um, knock retard and see if I am pinging at all. Uh, see if, if that can maybe be pushed. That could be worth like half horsepower. There's, there's really not a whole lot of gains to be made here on a naturally aspirated engine, let's be honest, but let's keep going through here. Knock uh, correction limits and thresholds. And you got stuff like more e EGR spark advance and ooh, variable, variable cam timing. That's interesting. What is this? RPM versus interpolated engine load. And that must be degrees of cam timing change. That's kind of neat. So the VTEC kicks in at 100% load over 1500 RPM. That, that's kind of cool. Not sure what to do with that. Uh, you can turn off whatever uh, engine codes your heart desires. So if you're getting a, a P0420 because you removed your cats, it, maybe this car doesn't actually have P0420. It does appear to have a bunch of EVAP, EVAP stuff that I'm sure is super interesting and fun. And then here's some other stuff. Uh, diesel fuel cutoff patches. So you can turn that off. It's not really a table. This actually changes something else. You can turn the immobilizer off, which is interesting, and change um, the cooling gauge. Like the, the, the coolant gauge is a dummy gauge on most of these cars. It just kind of goes up to the middle and stays there. You can actually change that so that it's real, I think, except uh, these all say NAN in them, and I'm not entirely sure what to make of that. So what I'm gonna do is I want to disable the diesel fuel cut off. So I'm going to change this to a nine. Done. Okay, that is now nine. So I now have no more diesel fuel cut off. And the other thing I want to do is in first and second gear, this applies some weird, oh, interesting. Oh, oh no, it's just in second gear. Second gear, but not first. That makes a lot of sense actually. Oh no, there is some scaling, it's just different. So I've actually downloaded a stock NC ROM and looked at this stuff before. It was totally different than the values I'm seeing here. Um, it, the, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a scaling difference between what you want the throttle to do and what the throttle blades actually do. And in first gear here, you can see at like 35% throttle, it's actually only 28%. And then at 50% throttle, it's 50. But then in sec, and that's in first gear. But then in second gear, you've got. 40% throttle is 34, 70 is 50, 80 is 50, 90 is 50, 100 is 50. It never goes beyond 50% throttle for some reason. What on earth? And then in third gear, it's actually the opposite. It is higher in some of them. That's, that's hokey. I don't know about that. This probably makes the car drive smoother or whatever, but um, I want a manual because I'm a control freak. And when the car isn't doing what I don't want it to, that makes me unhappy. So I think fourth, fifth, and sixth gear table here, which just popped up. What? It's still weird. I don't understand. 
90% throttle is 99% throttle, 70 is 77, 60 is 67. That's bizarre. I don't, I don't know about this. I'm going to change all these so that they're one to one just because I'm, I'm, I'm like that. So I'm gonna make 45, 45. I'm gonna make 50 equal 50 and so on. Okay, let's copy these. Is copy still control C here? Yes, it is. And then paste to all other. Oh, it just pasted it to the first one. Uh, I've got to do these individually. Oh, well, paste, paste, paste. And now that I have that entire table for fourth, fifth and sixth gear normalized to be one to one, I'm going to go over to my second gear. I'm going to paste that in here and boop. Yes, numbers mean numbers now. So now I have a one-to-one -one throttle and a disabled fuel cutoff. Oh, and did I not change first gear? Oh, paste. They are all fixed. Oh, and apparently neutral is also strange. Why is neutral strange? I, I just, I don't understand. I'm sure there's reasons for this. It's, it's like a, it's like a net thing. Uh, you can buy a box and that one actually has one to change this, this exact thing um, so that it's easier to stay in lean burn mode. I'm sure this is just to make it easier to drive the car more economically. Um, I don't care. Rev limit fuel cut is 7,000. I'm going to make that equal 7,400. So it's actually got two different kinds of uh, rev limiters. There's the, the throttle blade itself starts backing out and then there's the actual spark cut. So what did I make my fuel cut? Or sorry, fuel cut. I made the fuel cut one 7,400. Let's change that to 7,500. And then we'll make the throttle cut out at 7,400. That isn't necessarily to make more power. These engines power drops off a cliff. That's because in autocross, in second gear, I might want that extra five miles an hour. Uh, I know the last autocross you saw, I was heading across the finish line going ring ding 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 off of the uh, rev limiter. I'm now gonna save this ROM as baby's first tune. Now, turn the car back on. Okay. And I can go into my ROM drop folder. I'm gonna take baby's first tune.bin and drop it right onto romdrop.exe and it will open up and then close. What just happened? And boom, it's the next day. I had to do a bit of research. For whatever reason, ECU Flash was spitting out corrupt files until I like opened them back up and saved them again after restarting my computer. Uh, I actually ended up uh, with a non-starting car for a minute. There's a there's a hair on the lens. I had, to, I had to learn a bit about the sanity check the ECU does. It actually has a threshold for how fast the throttle blade can move before the car will actually go into limp mode because it assumes something is wrong. So I had to fix that. And then I did the patch to disable the decel fuel cutoff. And then I went into this table here. This is Spark Advance, low fuel demand, low detonation. Um, I just went and took all of the basically off throttle, you know, no load on the engine above 3,500 RPM. And I set it to be like negative seven uh, degrees of timing advance. So that's actually seven degrees past top dead center. So that should result in some um, booms in the exhaust. I don't know, I don't know how many or how much. And this, this is definitely going to be bad for my cats, but uh, that's an excuse to get an OBX header, so. Okay, so I got the file saved. It's saving it as 1,024 kilobytes now instead of 1,025, which is how I knew it was messing up and those just didn't flash right at all and would result in a non-starting car. So let's just switch on the ignition here. It really helps if you plug this into your laptop. So the cool thing about ROM drop is since I've, act I've actually already done a full flash, now when I open ROM drop back up, I don't have to do a full flash again. Since all I changed was those couple of values, I can hit dynamic flash partial ROM and then drag and drop baby's first tune dot bin onto ROM drop and boom, it's only having to write 
256 blocks instead of the like 980 or something that a full ROM would be. So that's pretty cool. And, and that also saves wear and tear read write cycles on the ECU itself. And I just heard a whole bunch of relays and stuff click. So I'm gonna go quit. And then this is the part that I also kept forgetting, cycle the ignition off. I'm just gonna unplug this and throw my laptop off to the side and scoot my seat back up. I'll just leave that USB cable down there for now. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's see if it starts still. It does. Ooh. I like that. Let's, one of these days I'll actually get a uh, suction cup mount so that I can properly film while driving. Ooh, the throttle's a lot touchier. I just realized how very obvious it is that I'm filming. Oh well. <laughs> that's a good amount. Like, that's a fun little bit of drama. I like it. It's just a nice little bit of a pop-pop. I'm a big fan. So what I actually need to do now, uh, to be a real tuner, not some idiot screwing around with his uh, fuel cutoffs, I need to pop a micro SD card into that ROM drop and I need to go uh, uh, do some pulls. Uh, you know, third gear, just through the rev range a couple times. And that'll let me know if I'm getting any knock, uh, if I'm getting any, uh, well not knock, if I'm getting any pinging. Uh, spark knock is what it really is. I need to know if I'm having any of that. I need to know if what my lambdas are doing. See if there's anything I need to correct for, because every engine's different, and the factory calibration is really just kind of a one-size-fits-all, and that's sort of what tuning a naturally aspirated engine is accounting for and trying to fix. I've got a few friends who know a bit more about tuning than I do. Probably try and get them involved in this uh, so I'm not just completely flailing around here in the dark. At any rate, I'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching.